together. And uh, before we do, though, why don't we stand up and greet our neighbors? For those who took a bottle for Serenity Pregnancy Resource Center, please remember to return those to the church next Sunday, June 20th. Baskets will be available in the chapel and foyer to drop them off. Father's Day is next Sunday. Thank you to everyone who signed up to make cookies. Please drop them off at the church by 10.30 this Saturday. There's a ladies' work day this Saturday, June 19th at 10.30 a.m. to box up the cookies. And kids are welcome to come and help as well. Consistory, the monthly meeting is this Thursday, June 17th at 7 p.m. The financial committee meets at 6.30 p.m. Katie Bauer passed into the Lord's arms on January 20th of this year. There will be a memorial service for her this Thursday, June 17th at 1 here at Zion. A meal will follow the graveside service. Also, Please know there will be a short consistory meeting after the service and the pastor study. So consistory members, short meeting, sorry, short meeting after the service and the pastor's study. Also, um, Charlie Leva would like to wish his wife Barb a happy birthday, and uh, so would I. Uh, so happy birthday, Barb. <laughs> And finally, I have an announcement with the youth. We were going to go um, this Wednesday at 5 until then we're turn at 8 to go hike in the mountains. Um, we're still going to hike, youth members that are here. But I went to the mountains yesterday to go running, and I got trapped behind a place where they were doing road work and before another place. And so I think just for the sake of time and because I don't want you to see a pastor have road rage, um, <laughs> I've decided to postpone that. And I thought it'd be nice to hike in Gooseberry Badlands. It's very pretty. Um, we might see some, like, there's a place where I know some owls, like, live in a cave. So maybe we'll see some of those. It's very nice. And we will postpone the moose hike. But it's going to happen. We just have to wait for that road work to be done because, my goodness, and I'm sure you know, it's not going to be done anytime soon. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I mean, it's on the other side of tent sleep, at least. But it's extremely frustrating. So, um, Gooseberry Badlands, instead, very nice, very pretty. You might still see some wildlife. So, thank you. Is it still at five now? Uh, yes. Okay. So, I thought, it takes about 45 minutes to get there, but we get a good hour there, return. Um, but, yes, uh, five o'clock. Thank you. Morning. 
I just have a quick announcement. I just wanted to let everyone know that we had our first annual Adopt the Highway cleanup yesterday, and it went great. It only took us about two or three hours. Um, we had several people show up, and it was just a good time of fellowship and actually doing some community service. It was, um, it was just awesome. So I would like to thank Sarah, Jamie, Steve and Sue, Matt and Isaiah, Nicholas, Tanner, Jasmine and Kevin, and Molly for all of your business support. And we hope to see more of you next time this fall. And we'll do it again. Thank you so much. Are there any other announcements? Would you please join me in prayer then? Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day that you have set before us, Lord. We just thank you that we can come into your place of worship today, Lord, to honor and to praise your name. And we just thank you for that. And I just ask that you would be with each person that is here this morning. And I would ask that you would be with each person that takes part in this service this morning, Lord. Whether it be through the music or through the reading of your word. Or I just ask that you be with Don as he brings us the message, Lord. Speak through him, Lord, and open our hearts and our minds that we might receive your word that you want us to hear. And now, Lord, I just ask all this in your precious and holy name, and I ask all of it. Amen. Amen. Our call to worship this morning comes from Psalm 68, verses 4 through 5 and 19. Sing to God, sing in praise of his name. Extol him who rides on the clouds. Rejoice before him. His name is the Lord. A father to the fatherless, a defender of widows, is God in his holy dwelling. Praise be to the Lord, to God our Savior who daily bears our burdens. This past Sunday, we had the privilege of uh, welcoming some new members into our church. And uh, so I'd like to recognize them at this time. And as we're calling them forward and calling the consistory forward, I'm going to read some scripture. But here's what I'd like to do. I'd like for the consistory to line up right along the, uh, the front row here facing me, and then I'd like the three new members to stand at the uh, altar here facing the congregation. So if you would, come on down. I, I, I see all of you here, so come on down, and uh, we're going to give them the right hand of fellowship, but I'm going to read some scripture before we get started. It was he who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, some to be pastors, some teachers, and to prepare God's work, and to prepare God's people for works of service, so that the body of Christ may be built up, until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole fullness of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants, tossed back and forth by waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning craftiness of men and their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will in all things grow up into him who is the head that is Christ? And that is so true. Uh, we all need the body of Christ. I read these words this week and I thought they were so appropriate. In precept and practice, uh, you will be constantly influencing those entrusted to your care of the deepest things of life, eternal things. I'm going 
got another one I want to read here in just a second. Will you be faithful, earnest, sympathetic, preserving, keeping in mind that the goals of Christian ministry included evangelism, educated, education, edification, encouragement, equipping, and establishing others in faith? One requirement found faithful is glorifying our Heavenly Father. Christians are not just to be faithful, but to be found faithful. Or discovered faithful. As cold as the judge and the critic may be, even they soon acknowledge when a child of God is a genuine article and they do know the difference. It is so important for us to be a part of the body of Christ. The body of Christ gives us strength, gives us encouragement, gives us. Uh, teaching and gives us uh, a place where we can be uh, uh, accountable. And so it is extremely important that all of us are a part of the body of Christ. And today we have three people who have uh, expressed their desire to be a part of our church. And I'd like to introduce them to you right now. First of all, and I'll give them a chance to talk, but if they don't want to talk, they don't have to. <laughs> First of all, there's Ash Earl. Ash, welcome to our church. Would you like to say anything? Good morning. <laughs> That's great. That is edifying. And Doris Van Hooven, uh, we're glad to have you, Doris. And uh, we'd like to extend to you the right hand of fellowship. And uh, is there anything you'd like to say? I'm very happy to be here. Thank you. And Jan Van Hooven. Would you please stand with us and we begin our opening hymn.
seated. This morning's scripture reading comes from Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him, and will he will make your path straight.
besides the uh, prayer requests that you have in your bulletin this morning, uh, I'd like to add a couple. Uh, Chase and Elizabeth left for Denver this morning for their uh, national debate and uh, speech conferences. Uh, also, uh, Nate is going to be having his second surgery this Tuesday uh, on his left leg, and, and they're going to be reconstructing that. So let's be in prayer for Nate this morning. Buddy, I guarantee you I'll be praying for you Tuesday morning. If you won't be there, I'll be there, okay? And uh, God still heals and answers prayers. Uh, we see that every week. If we were to keep a ledger of prayers that have been answered here, even just this year, it would be amazing to you to see the number of prayers that have been answered. And uh, God is a loving, caring, miracle-working God who hears and answers our prayers. So let's go to him today and ask him uh, to work in behalf of all of these needs. Father in heaven, we thank you that you have given us such a beautiful day to be in your house, worshiping you in spirit and in truth. Lord, we thank you for an incredible group of leaders that are willing to get up and show that they are willing uh, to lead a service uh, and show their talents. And Lord, we look forward to what we've, not only what we've seen, but what we're going to see. And we ask that you would bless uh, Don as he brings a message. Uh, Lord, I'm, I, I've been looking forward to this for a long time, and I pray that you would just give him the words that you would have him to say. And strengthen him, encourage him, and uh, Lord, bless him uh, beyond his wildest imagination. Lord, be with Chase and Elizabeth uh, as they left for Denver this morning. But also, uh, we ask that you would be with Nate as he goes in for another uh, leg reconstruction. And... God, I pray that you would help him uh, recover quickly. And uh, Lord, I pray that you would help him to run quicker uh, and to move better and to be a better athlete and to be uh, just a testimony of how good his God is to him. Lord, I thank you that uh, he's a young man who stands on principle and stands on the word of God and loves you with all of his heart, his soul, and his mind. Lord, we thank you that today that we have come here expecting you to change us to be more like you. When we leave these doors today, that we will change to be more like the image of your Son, Jesus Christ. We look forward to what you have in store for us, and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen.
frustration with road construction. You know, there's four seasons in Wyoming, oh, almost winter, winter, still winter, and road construction. I know everybody knows that it's kind of an old joke. So trust the journey. Uh, in the past few months, I have started to uh, listen to music uh, in the morning when I get up. I like to listen to uh, Vertical Worship, uh, Big Daddy Weave, Casting Crowns, We the Kingdom. Um, and so a couple weeks ago, I thought about uh, maybe I could find him music video or just a song even about a journey. Well, lo and behold, uh, I googled journey and after I got by the rock and roll band journey, I got to uh, ICF worship as a band in Zurich. So this is a, uh, this is the song and I'd like you to uh, listen to this and, and you can uh, see what you think about it.
Will you pray with me, please? Father, we know that you are with us on this journey called life. Through your word, we understand your promise to never leave or forsake us. When we listen to the words in a song, we understand your love for us, and we hear our own weaknesses. And when we realize, Lord, that you are in total control of everything, we give our lives to you. Loosen our grip on earthly things, Father, and strengthen our resolve to trust in you alone. Jesus, we ask for the knowledge and the strength to chase after you every day. And all God's people said, Amen. We all have a journey, don't we? Sure, we may journey together as a husband uh, or wife, uh, as a family or with friends, but we're all on an individual journey of our own. Jesus had a journey from a manger in Bethlehem to a cross on Golgotha, from a borrowed tomb to a lakeside breakfast with his disciples, and then from this earth to the right hand of God. We are all in this world, and we are all on a journey. We all have different journeys, but should have similar goals. As Christians, we are called to be imitators of God. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 1 says, Imitate God, therefore, in everything you do, because you are his dear children. So why did I think about a journey? How did I come up with this? Well, in our house, when the alarm goes off, the coffee pot turns on. So I, I know some people who don't even speak before they take their first drink of coffee. I'm not going to mention any names. So a few months ago, I noticed that the cup that I had used for several years in the wheelchair uh, had a big crack in it. So I was uh, on the market for a new coffee cup. And Brenda said to me, well, I have one that was given to me as a Christmas present. So sure enough, she gave me the cup and the sermon was born. There's my new cup, and I haven't broken it yet. I noticed the saying on the cup, but I didn't pay much attention to it. Uh, then a couple weeks later, I began to think about what a journey really is. So I wanted the definition, and I looked it up. You can look up anything on Google or DuckDuckGo or whatever you happen to use. A journey is defined as the act of traveling from one place to another, especially when involving a considerable distance. I think it's safe to say that we have all traveled a considerable distance over the last 18 months. The journey that all of us have had with the pandemic has produced suffering and loneliness confusion and disruption. We have learned about masks and quarantines, canceled events, social distancing, testing, vaccines, the randomness and the veracity of this virus, and the list just goes on. I thought about all the lives that had been changed. Even though some things are back to normal, the effects of this pandemic are still being felt. And so many are becoming very weary of this life. I thought about the 2020 election, the change of leadership in our country, and the turmoil that it has created. I wondered about all the anger this election has caused, and all the uncertainty. False narratives about racism, the police, climate change, and open borders. There just seem to be so many fears. So many tears in the fabric of our country. Right now, maybe now for us, it's more difficult than ever to trust the journey. The definition of trust is a certainty in the character, 
ability, strength, or truth of someone or something. One in which confidence is placed, a dependence on something future or contingent. Hope. As a part of my testimony, I want to tell you of my experience with RSD uh, and CRPS and expose you to some of the information about the disease. I would definitely describe the last 15 years as a journey for me in which hope has played a huge role. It has been a painful journey, but one that has quite possibly defined me as a Christian one that has refined me as a person of faith. And like any Christian, I will always be a work in progress. I don't remember when I first heard about reflex sympathetic dystrophy, but I do remember the first doctor who gave me the diagnosis. He, he was an anesthesiologist down in Denver, Colorado, very intelligent man, Dr. Anthony Pacconi. His friends call him Tony Pacconi, which <laughs> he was a great guy, he really was. I also remember that finding medical treatment that we could trust to guide us through the journey of this disease was very tough. I say we and does, because when you are in constant debilitating pain, your entire family is knee deep in it. I don't believe for a minute that I could have gone through the pain without Brenda and my family. I'm not sure how people who don't know Christ actually go through it. I don't believe that I could have. RSD is also known as the suicide disease for a reason. Even with medication, RSD pain is every second, every minute, every hour, every day. It never ends. We had so many questions that no one could really answer clearly for us. And there was so much confusion, kind of like the pandemic. What in the world is art, Steve? Why did I have it? Well, some 10 years later, in a state that I had never been to, I discovered that this painful scenario has played out thousands upon thousands of times around the world. The disease is now called by its clinical name, Complex Regional Pain Syndrome, CRPS as I call it, and it's the number one source of pain on the human pain scale. So. It's about childbirth, amputation, uh, many things. So our plan was to go anywhere, to see anyone and do anything to get my life back. And I have been on, asked on countless occasions, how did you stay hopeful? How did you find the place that helped you? How did you trust them during the therapy? My answer is simply, I trust God. My reason for pointing this out is not to have you feel badly for me, not to understand that RSD is estimated to affect upwards of 5 million people worldwide. I tell you this because without Jesus interwoven through my life and my family, I'm not sure I would be here. And the more I thought about trusting the journey, the more I reflected on the past 18 months of my life in a way that certainly seemed like I had traveled a considerable distance. I recalled my journey to Arkansas, to the Sparrow Clinic, and all those wonderful people down there. I thought about wheeling into that clinic in a wheelchair in February of 2020. I thought about the 13 weeks of therapy, ringing the bell and then walking out of that clinic on May 10th. I thought about all the relationships that I formed with other patients there. I thought about all the prayers that had been answered 
and I am so humbled by your prayers. I'm so very thankful for my family that prayed and also prayers sit in Fayetteville at the clinic. Many of the patients at the clinic knew Christ as their Savior. We prayed for each other. We prayed with each other. So my first point in this message is to rest and to trust. Isaiah 30, 15 says, In repentance and rest is your salvation. In quietness and trust is your strength. There is something inside the heart of people that requires a human response to adversity. We demand action from others and from ourselves when difficulties come. So the response God desires, as pictured in this verse, is counterintuitive. Quietness? Trust? Most people, whether now or in Isaiah's day, would say that these are not common ways to react in times of crisis. It's far easier to trust in horses and chariots than to rest and find strength in the Lord. Another way to put it is if a God wants a thing to succeed, you can't mess it up. If he wants a thing to fail, you can't save it. So after 15 years, countless prayers, and very dedicated people, I am in remission from CRPS. Yeah. Yeah. I still experience pain every day uh, from surgeries and treatments and medication that I received during the illness, but I continue to make progress towards being pain-free one day. Now let's go back to the words on the cup. Has your last 15 years been smooth sailing? I'm betting not. But I kept looking at the cup and started thinking about all the journeys that I had taken. And then I thought about breaking the journeys down into individual trips. A fishing trip sounds more appropriate than a fishing journey. I mean, a journey says so much more than a trip to the lake. So I started to think about the good kind of trips we take. Happy trips. Trips to the wedding. Trips to the hospital delivery room. Trips to the school program. To spring break. Fishing trips. Vacations. Trips to the game. The Grand March graduation in college, and then it all just kind of starts over again, doesn't it? Then I thought, what about the not-so-good trips? The trips when something is not going well. I recall trips to the doctor looking for answers to unanswerable questions. Trips to the emergency room. What about the trips to meet the nursing home director? finally the trip to the funeral. And now let's think about that word trust again. Who would we trust on these trips? Who do we trust when we travel? Is it the travel agent who booked the trip? We need to trust the person taking care of our house and our pets. Maybe the driver of the car or the pilot of the airplane. What about the person responsible for where we stay when we arrive at the destination? The tour guide. Most importantly, the fishing guide. There are so many people to trust when you take a trip. So I have an admission to make here. I like to label things. So I have a label of, labeler at the rod shop and I also have one at home. So I added my final thought to my coffee cup. It's God's plan. So this is how I would like to close. If you and I really think about all of the trips and the journeys that we make, 
if we really believe and trust and hope, if we really believe that God is in control, then we have to believe that every day of our lives is carried out in God's plan. So that's point number two. It's God's plan. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Although believers may want to take this verse and apply it to their own life as an insurance, as an assurance of God's individual plan for them, it is much bigger than everyday decisions. Modern day believers often apply it to deciding what college to attend, which job to take, which city to move to. These are all trivial matters when compared to the future hope that God promises to his people. Now that makes sense to me. The trivial things we don't hold on to. The plans that God has for us, we hold on to. Do we trust our plans? Occasionally. But in all things, we need to trust Jesus. He died to save us. Let's pray. Father, there are so many times that we don't understand your plan. So many times when we want to question your plan. Give us the wisdom to trust you in all things, Lord. Give us the strength to endure this life when things don't go our way. Please give us the faith, hope, and love that Pastor Dobson spoke of last week. In Jesus' name I pray.